Hi, I'm Rick Kepler. And I'm Mark Durbin with another episode of Movies in the Mountains. You know, Hollywood has been making films up here in Big Bear ever since the film industry got started. And the wonderful thing about these old films is that they are like time capsules. They give us a glimpse into what Big Bear was like way back in its early years. Not only that, some of the movie stars and directors who came here to make movies fell in love with Big Bear. Some bought vacation homes, and some even became involved in the development of the Big Bear community. One of those Hollywood celebrities back in the 1940s and 50s was a legendary singing cowboy film and TV star, Roy Rogers. Roy started making movies in 1935. During his career, he became known as the King of the Cowboys. He and his wife, Dell Evans, filmed many of their movies and TV shows right here in Big Bear. This included the movie, North of the Great Divide, that was made in 1950. The Indian village in this scene was supposedly located on the Canadian border. It was actually filmed on the shoreline at the east end of Big Bear Lake near Eagle Point. Look closely and you will see Stanfield cut off in the background. This was during the drought years, and the lake level at that time in 1950 was down about 45 to 50 feet. Here is a chase scene from the Rogers film, Trail of Robin Hood. It begins with Roy chasing bad guys on horseback along the south shore of Big Bear Lake, and ends up over on Cedar Lake with a foot chase across the top of the dam. In addition to filming around the lake, Roy once used the historic Peter Pan Woodland Club as a movie set for the movie, Don't Fence Me In. For those who are unfamiliar with the Peter Pan Woodland Club, it was a very important resort in our Big Bear Lake history. Unlike most of the early Big Bear resorts, which were built on or near the lake, the Woodland Club was built in the empty pasture land between Big Bear Lake and Baldwin Lake back in 1927. The massive four-story clubhouse was located at today's intersection of Greenway and Country Club in Big Bear City. It had its own swimming pool, movie theater, tennis courts, and golf course that covered the area over which is now the east end of Big Bear City Airport's runway. All the way across Greenway, and over to where the Big Bear Museum is today. We covered the history of this once great resort in detail in one of our previous videos. Like all of the grand resorts in Big Bear's early years, the Peter Pan Woodland Club has long since faded into history. But in addition to photographs, movies like Don't Fence Me In give us a unique look at both the outside and inside of this once great resort. This rodeo scene was filmed at the Woodland Club. It looks east towards Greenway. The Woodland Clubhouse can be seen on the right side of the screen, just behind the rodeo arena were the club's tennis courts and swimming pool. That swimming pool had a unique figure eight shape. In this scene, we see Dale Evans pushing our hero, Roy Rogers, into the swimming pool. Cowboy. Yes, even the interior of the club was used as a movie set. Here we see Dell Evans and Roy in one of the guest rooms. Well, I hope I'm not intruding. You'll pardon me, of course, but I'm just bubbling with curiosity. In short, what's the big idea? Just doing a little checking up. Now we see Roy chasing Dell Evans through the lobby of the clubhouse. Don't Fence Me In was released in October of 1945. Unfortunately, in 1948, just three years after this film was released, there was an early morning fire that completely destroyed the beautiful Peter Pan Woodland Clubhouse. Check out this scene from an episode of one of Roy Rogers' TV shows. 
It is unusual because instead of Roy chasing the bad guys on horseback, we see Roy chasing them in a motorboat out on Big Bear Lake. And there was a very good reason for this. That's right. The commercial marina used in this film was Gray's Landing, located on the north shore of the lake. This was once a very popular marina, and it was popular for a couple of reasons. First, unlike most other marinas, it had a deep water location near the dam, which meant even when the lake levels were low, which was very common back in Big Bear's early years, Gray's usually had water. And the second reason was that Gray's was owned by, you guessed it, our hero, Roy Rogers. Another boat was pulled in here, Bullet. Big Bear tour boats from other marinas would usually make it a point to stop at Gray's Landing. Tourists would sometimes be surprised to find Roy Rogers and his friend Bob Nolan of the popular Sons of the Pioneers singing group in the kitchen slinging hamburgers on busy weekends. Once in a while, things would get interesting when some of Roy's celebrity friends would show up. And one of those celebrity guests was entertainer Mel Blank, who had a vacation home on the south shore of Big Bear Lake. Mel was known as the man of a thousand voices. He is best remembered for creating all of the voices of the Looney Tune cartoon characters, such as Porky Pig, Daffy Duck, Bugs Bunny, and many others. Mel passed away in 1989. However, Mel had a son, Noel, who is also an entertainer and producer. Back in 2006, I was producing historical TV shows for our local TV station. Kim Sweet was our host at the time. And with the help of video photographer Owen Ferris, we met up with Noel Blank at his Big Bear Lake home. And he gave us this interview of his days as a kid with the Roy Rogers family. Here are Kim and Noel. Now we've been telling our viewers about Roy Rogers and the movies that he made in Big Bear, and uh -huh. that he was a personal friend of you and your family's. Yes, he was. Isn't it true that Roy used to own Gray's Landing? Yes, he did own Gray's Landing, or a portion of Gray's Landing. And we used to go there almost every day for lunch. Roy used to be there, and Bob Nolan used to be there. Now, Bob Nolan was with Roy on about 40 pictures. He had the Sons of the Pioneers. What a great singing group. Plus, Bob Nolan wrote Cool Clear Water and Tumbling Tumbleweeds, probably the two greatest Western ballads ever made. He had plenty of money, so he came up here to sling burgers with his wife, Peanuts. And Peanuts owned or ran the general store, and Bob would sling the burgers on this wonderful grill, and the burgers were so good. They were little tiny ones with great sauce that he would do. Anyway, this was a real hangout, Gray's Landing. It's about a, a mile east of the dam. And all the boats used to stop there, even the tour boats. The Sierra at that time used to stop there for lunch. Everything, everybody stopped there. Anyway, one day was very special because the door opened. It was like barroom doors, you know, how they sling open. And s who was there but Humphrey Bogart. He was making a picture up here called Knock on Any Door, 1949. He came through the door, silence. He was the biggest star around at that time. He comes and he goes and he grabs Roy and hugs him. He says, Roy Raj. And then Roy says, well, you know, this is Mel Blank, and oh, Bogey goes nuts because Mel, you know, do Bugs Bunny, do Porky Pig, do Daffy Duck, do Tweety. Do so all of a sudden, Bogey became a fan of Roy Rogers and of all the Looney Tunes characters. We all sat there at the bar, had a, well, not the bar, but at the counter. It was mm -hmm. like an old wooden right. counter, and had some more of uh, the wonderful, delicious hamburgers that were being made. And then everybody left, and we'd all climb into our boats and go back home. Big Bear was an amazing place because all the movie stars would come up here, shoot the movies, and of course go over to Roy Rogers' place, which was Gray's Landing, so they could see Roy. So, Noel, you told us about Bogart visiting, and we know that there have been a lot of stars coming and going in Big Bear, but you did have a personal relationship with Roy. Yeah, Roy was not only a neighbor, but we used to see him all the time because Roy loved the water. So he'd bring his boat over all the time to our dock, and he knew my mom made great lunches. So he'd bring his boat over with his kids. You know, he had so many kids. He had a lot of wonderful adopted kids. Right. But he had, you know, 18 kids or 20 kids. Mm -hmm. He'd bring three or four of the kids over, and we'd all sit on the dock and have uh, wonderful lunches and spend the lazy summer days just sitting around and having fun. But there's a story that goes with that. Okay. 
The story is we were sitting out on the dock one day, and we hear a plane missing. You know how an engine missing? Yes. Uh, 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 it's going and stopping. And we look up, and there's a little red plane. It looks like a Piper Cub, maybe a Cess uh, early Cessna. Very small plane. Going very, very slowly. And it's going right over our head. All of a sudden, the engine quits. Uh-oh. And it takes a spiral toward the North Shore. Now, where our dock was, we weren't totally visible of where it landed. We didn't know if it crashed or not, but we knew it had to probably crash. We all jumped into my dad's boat. Roy jumped into his boat. Roy's boat was much faster than my dad's boat. And the, they were all loaded up. Roy ran across the lake with his boat, and it was an amazing scene to see what had happened across the lake because the plane has crashed onto the beach, and it's burning. One of the occupants has jumped out of the plane, and Roy, without even realizing it, jumps out of his boat and it, it jumps into the water, and the water's about knee deep, and runs into the beach, grabs the guy as he's coming down the hill, throws him on the ground. The man is on fire. He uh, douses the fire. And this was amazing to see Roy Rogers, my hero, the kid's hero, everyone's hero, real life hero now, jumping like a panther up the beach, grabbing the, this, this burning man and rolling him on the ground and saving this man's life. It was a, 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 something that I'll never forget, it, it embedded in my memory. It's Noel, do you recall when the gentleman, if he came to, did he, real, did he figure out that Roy Rogers had just saved his life? From what I understand, he, he had second degree burns, but he realized that Roy saved his life. And uh, yeah, there was a wonderful story that went on after that, that they became friends. Thank you, Noel, for having us today and giving us an insight for our viewers on your life with Roy Rogers in Hollywood. It's always fun to have you over here, and I know you've got to be on your way. Where are you going to go now? We are heading out and looking at some other areas in and around Big Bear that were locations for the movie industry. Sounds like fun. Thanks for having us, Noel. Do you mind if I come with you? We'd love to have <laughs> you with us. Anytime. Okay. Mel Blank and his family came to Big Bear Lake and built their vacation home around 1945. Mel also became involved in the Big Bear community and served as the honorary mayor of Big Bear for over 25 years. Mel's son Noel not only carried on his father's legacy with Looney Tunes, but for many years he also hosted one of the morning shows on our local Big Bear TV station. So follow us on Facebook or YouTube because we are going to be telling the interesting story of the Blanks family involvement in the Big Bear community in future Mountains in the Movies videos. And other Big Bear celebrities such as Cecil B. DeMille and Andy Devine. That's right. We'll see you then. <laughs>